In this challenge series, we create the fastest cars in the world in an alternate history timeline. What could have been if the Duesenberg family had continued their crazy legacy? Will we be able to continue in their footsteps and manage to break all top speed records while remaining profitable as a company? Let's find out in Automation, the car company tycoon game. For more info about this challenge and the series, make sure to check out the description box below. And now let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we start our little competition challenge whatever campaign play with the fastest cars in the world. Continuing the legacy of the Duesenberg family building bonkers cars uh, that are just crazy fast. And today's first episode is designing a car in um, 1946 and it has a target a top speed, like the top model needs to have a target speed of at least 258 kilometers an hour and a minimum speed within that model, a separate trim that is, um, is for any separate trim. Uh, is 214 kilometers an hour. That is the fastest car in the world at that time. So I think the first thing we do is check how awful the economy is. Oh, a nice little upturn here for the luxury segment in my game. That might look completely different for you guys. Um, and probably until the car is actually done, this will have disappeared. So, yeah, we do need to get uh, started with designing a car. I won't be doing any kind of R&D, but you can see here what kind of uh, tech I chose to use. I did not choose any aerodynamics because that is the basically the only real tech I'm going to invest into myself. All right, I think the only thing left to do now is uh, to actually build a car. So, what kind of bodies do we have? Um, one thing that is important to note is when you click a body like this, you do get the effective area on top here. And by the way, if you haven't built your car yet, uh, do that now. Because I'm going to probably make this a lot easier for, uh, for many of you by just showing you all kinds of developer tricks and tips, right? Um, although if you have watched my previous Let's Plays of Automation, I'm, I'm assuming you know most of them anyway. So uh, you watch the effective area of the, the car body you're using because that is what is going to create all the drag in the world for you. And if we use, for instance, this car, looking nice and stuff, but it has a disadvantage over this one, which is more aerodynamically shaped. Also, this body is amazing because it has such a long bonnet and the engine is basically sitting all the way back here at the firewall, which means this is more or less a front mid-engined car. And I'm going to use this one, even though it is considered a three-door car, which slightly reduces um, the prestige rating of it. One thing which is going to be troubling in the first uh, few years of the game is that there is no hypercar market. They don't exist yet. Neither is there a supercar market. They don't exist yet, which is uh, not, not good. Uh, not good for us. No, 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 not at all. And I think I'm going with a space frame and steel and front longitudinal, double wishbone, double wishbone, full alloy. No mass production, no mass production. That is, that are two severe limiting factors. But the engine itself will also be severely limited in production. Uh, and will be probably pretty complex, but just look at this massive engine bay. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, so, yes, we are going to use this body. It's reasonably aerodynamic for its time. Uh, very aer aerodynamic, to be exact. And uh, we need loads of grill on this one. And uh, as normally, I'm not going to design my cars, even though there are fewer cars available. Uh, or fewer cars to make this time around in this challenge and uh, the reasoning is I, I just um, recently replied to a comment which was uh, which was pointing out yeah you're kind of busy so that takes time right so yes it does take time I calculated if I had designed made um, actual proper designs for each car I made 
that would have been about 15 to 20 minutes of extra work, like 15 minutes of uh, nicely designing it and so on, and then uh, five minutes of extra editing work to make it look good and shit. And times 39, that's 13 hours. These 13 hours, I now have time to put into this challenge, which you otherwise wouldn't have gotten. So that's why I don't do car designs. Uh, first of all, I suck at them real bad. And second of all, I think it's uh, kind of waste of time. I want to provide more content, more high quality content instead. So um, we need a company color. Company color should be constant throughout the years. And I think I'm going with something that is akin to fire. Yes, yeah, something fiery. Let's make it uh, maybe like this, yes. And real shiny. Ah, yes, I like this. This is my new company color. Uh, you can make your own preset by um, just right clicking one of these palette fields after you have selected your color and this one is ugly so I'm going to replace this. This is now my company color and that one will save. Uh, it will be there for the next time for you to use. So I'm going with rear wheel drive obviously. This four wheel drive does not help you. That is only manual and it's only on gravel or even more loose terrain. Uh, which because otherwise it destroys your car if you activate it. So now for, uh, for the difficult part. We do want to reach, what was it? I still have it on paper. Um, 258 kilometers an hour. That would seem to me as if we need to push something around 300 horsepower at least, uh, which is a lot. That is, that is a massive amount. And things don't really rev that high. And also what you need to keep in mind is an upgrade path for your future cars. It is nice and all if you survive for your first two or three models, but if your company then dies, then you are not much better than the original Duesenberg family, right? So that would suck. And I think I'm going for V12 straight up because yes, first of all, they are super expensive to make, but I do need uh, because we have so few cars which we engineer with that, I do need the familiarity rating. So I want to keep it as standardized as possible. And I don't want to put a large engine in there because first, in, uh, yeah, in these years, it is very, very difficult to stop the car. And I, it's also very difficult to rev the, uh, the engine. So maybe I'm going with something like a three liter, slightly over square. Yeah, 3 liter V12 and then rev the shit out of it. Um, one thing that helps to know is direct acting overhead cam is a viable precursor to dual overhead cam if you like it. There are no rockers there either and basically dual overhead cam is di twice direct acting overhead cam in, in principle. So there is a nice overlap of familiarity there. So if you want to go a little cheaper with your first engine, you can do that. And um, yeah, the dual overhead cam uh, is, uh, yeah, that's an interesting option, isn't it? We could go with this one, but then you probably need a little bit larger engine. Uh, I don't quite know. I think I'm going to bite the bullet and go for the dual overhead cam two valve system. And yeah. Ouchies, ouchies, ouchies. But at least we get loads of familiarity with it really quick. So I do have two quality here and compression probably going to end up at 8.0 range-ish. I want to rev it pretty high, like 75 maybe around there. And quality goes up as well. Uh, naturally aspirated, carburetor single barrel carbs and uh, is this enough ah damn it we don't have and uh, that is not enough for getting anything out of it but i can amp up the quality a little bit and 265 horsepower maybe that's even enough i don't know we put a performance intake on there and we unfroin here so mm, regular let it it is uh damn it but uh fuel consumption we don't care about and I think I'm going with something like 70, 
17 condition time. Not too bad. And then maybe 6,500 as rev limiter. Let's see where we end up. Uh, probably going to specialize on long tubular headers throughout the game. Um, you can... Uh, which probably is the better option in the long run, but maybe not in the short run, would be to go with race tubular. But I'm kind of afraid of the uh, tag, no mass production here. So, uh, going for this diameter, as I'm uh, aiming for reasonably mid to high 200 horsepower range, and two baffled exhausts on here, and start the engine, and we have... Oh, fuck. Just 219 horsepower. That will not be enough. But we have no problems with knocking yet, so we can get, yeah, 231 horsepower. And, hmm, do we get more out of this? This is not limited by the carburetors just yet. Can we, oh, there comes the reliability hit. This is still okay. Ah, uh, yeah, we kind of need to rev it out, though. Otherwise, we won't be able to reach the top speeds. So, this might be a hit we need to take. And... Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Can we... No. No, no, going that way definitely hurts even more. We just don't have the technology yet. Alright, so we have an engine with 227 horsepower at 6,400 RPM. Pretty decent, I must say. We could amp up the quality here a bit, as you can see that, but... That increases engineering time a massive amount, and we are already very high. But we do have an engineer on the other hand, which is really good, so maybe it works out. I don't know, but first we need to um, get to the car, I would say. So let's do that. Oh, oh, wait a second. The exhaust could be tuned, I guess. Uh, exhaust... No, it's already pretty much optimized. Yeah, it's optimized. All right, let's get into the car. Gearbox, mm, single clutch, four gear, yeah, we need all those gears. But more top speed. Oh shit! The estimated top speed is not where we want it to be. Oh, this will be a battle. We need a larger engine. I put sport tires on there and uh, make them as large as possible, those tires. And, uh, yeah, that's as large as it gets. Maybe I can get another one. Come on! Higher quality tires. Yes! Okay, higher quality tires it is. Ah, uh, this doesn't fit much brakes, does it? And, uh, yeah, we could choose some classic looking rams. And get some width in here, too. And do I need to flare out the arches? Maybe I should do that. Maybe that helps uh, handling a little bit. But it also might make the car larger. So now, let me uh, have it like this. It needs to be fast and stable at high speeds, uh, not clunky. Um, just to keep it a little realistic there. Uh, so these wheels are still fitting in and shit. Yes, excellent. Let's continue on to the brakes. Drum brakes, maximum. Oh, fuck. Uh, amp them up to maximum. We need all the brake power. Plus seven, plus eight, maybe. And no under tray. The cooling airflow, yes, that needs to be much lower. Okay, here we can get shave off a little bit. And uh, that that's looking good. And maybe invest a little bit into quality. We'll have to see how much engineering time the car requires. And then we can put so much quality in here that <laughs> we uh, get to equal amounts, basically, with the engine. Uh, seats too, and... Well, handmade it is, right? Put the quality in there. Luxury. Put the quality in here. And advanced 40 safety. And here we go with passive sway bars. And wow! Oh, look at that tuning. And it's already maximized. And hypercars are doing really well. Uh, unfortunately, hypercars don't exist. So <laughs> it doesn't matter if they score really well. It's like, nope. Middle finger to you. Nothing to see here. Move on. I think we do need stiffer springs of all. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is doing pretty well. And we do have a little bit too much roll angle, though. Uh, maybe want to 
make it slide a bit more. No, that just benefits uh, benefits the hypercars a lot. Yeah, more drivability. Seems reasonable to have. And I think I'm going with 1.5 in camber all around. Gives us a little bit more grip and more tire wear. <laughs> I don't care right now. All right, let's see where we are at with our top speed right now. So our design, test track, there we go. Oh, we are really close. That is really close. Okay, our target speed, I remind you, is 258 kilometers an hour, and we are doing 252 kilometers an hour, more or less. And, hmm, so we can get a little more. 52. Uh, uh, how much engineering time does come in there? Production units. Oh, the production units go through the roof here. Oh, fuck. Okay. The gearbox isn't set right. How much do we need? Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, we are almost there. Yes. We'll spin 29%. Fuck that. And... Yeah, 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 we're getting there. 256 kilometers an hour. So now we just need a little bit more performance. Two more kilometers an hour. Come on, that must be possible. Maybe not with this engine setting, but this must be our top trim. So to, to break the uh, the target and then we make, um, I think, one more trim or maybe two. Nah, one should be fine. Which we strip out, uh, where we strip out a little bit of... Uh, unnecessary stuff and make it slower like a cheaper engine variant or something and yeah just um, just make sure it sells better because this one won't sell much uh, especially because there is no hypercar market don't forget about that okay we need more power probably around five to ten horsepower more to be on the safe side um, five horsepower more would be would be fine and how is oh that is re reducing that a lot i don't want that so maybe if we can switch around this a little bit like this yeah 230 makes the engine heavier but also yeah i think these extra 50 cc might be exactly what we needed so let's check this on out and see um is this enough now? Come on. 57? No! No, not 57. 257.1. Ah! Fucking hell. Alright, we need a larger engine. Another 50cc. Come on, we can do it. 3.1 liters, 300, uh, 231 horsepower. And maybe I can play around with cam profile. 233 horsepower. Okay, that should be enough. That really needs to be enough. And uh, maybe an ignition timing here and there. Oh yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly this. Um, that should be good. Let's move on to the car. And what do we have? Uh, it's struggling. It's struggling. 258.9. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We beat it. We beat it. Now we need to make the car good, though. That is... Well, no, we can't change much from here. I think this is as good as it gets. Uh, first gear to 100 in... What is what is it? Ex uh, the acceleration time? 8.2 seconds with all the wheel spin in the world. Excellent. All right. So uh, this is uh, the... Hmm... Okay, I think we're calling it the Tachyon. Or Tachyon. And uh, that, of course, is a particle that moves faster than the speed of light. Anyway, so that's uh, Tachyon, and uh, let's move on here. Um, how do we... Yeah, that one needs to be confirmed. So this is our top-end model. Let's just recheck. This is indeed 258.9 kilometers an hour, which is higher than 258 last time I checked. And now we want to make a lower spec version which can sell um oh by the way you need to s be able to sell these cars too
So now we make and produce them. Yes, you need to produce them and sell them. So now we make a mm, downsized version. Let's call this one uh, the premium, the P. Yes, DB1P. All right. And the engine can be detuned a little bit because this is this is also crazy. So this is the 3100P, which probably doesn't remain at 3100. Uh, I do want me some more reliability here. And maybe make it 2.9 liters. This is less bonkers and more moderate cam profile without knocking, of course. Um, there we go, 200 horsepower. That is, that is much more moderate. But we can uh, retain the quad carburetor. Maybe we want to have the triple carb instead. Yeah, let's go with the triple carb for this one. And maybe a standard intake. Um, what more could we do? Uh, now, mm, yeah, uh, just 199 horsepower. That's that's unfortunate, a figure. But we can amp this up a little bit now. Oh, damn it. Damn it, it needs to be stronger. There we go, 200 horsepower. All right, let's see what this does to uh, the driving stats. Um, let's update. Oh, it's still doing really well. <laughs> it's actually, probably it's the better car, to be honest. Um, and also the acceleration isn't much slower because we were grip limited anyway before. And what can we do here? Maybe go for the luxury and the premium. Yes. Yes, makes it lighter, should be better on the brakes too, and we retain the advanced safety, of course. And, oh, the brakes! Oh, they're horrible! Oh, they are absolute crap! Can I amp this up even more? Oh, yes, that helped a lot. Uh, maybe we want to do this here too. For the X, it needs even faster. It needs even better brakes, even better drum brakes! Plus 10! Here we go! Oh, yeah! That's much better. Okay, maybe something along these lines. Let's take a look at the markets, though. Uh, all right, this one isn't doing too terribly. Um, well, these categories don't even exist. So we want to make a sports car. The GT Premium segment will like the other one. I guess, I hope. I hope it will sell it. just a few cars. The sports segment probably thinks this one is still very expensive, though. So... I might look into making this just a premium interior instead. Which also makes the car slightly lighter. Um, yeah, that isn't too terrible, a choice. Overall saves lots of money for the car. And uh, yeah, looks like a good option. Oh, this needs to be tuned. Still doing 245 kilometers an hour. That's amazing. All right, so this car is um, just 0.1 seconds slower from 0 to 100, but <laughs> it is an actually good car. <laughs> that's an advantage. Uh, let's check again the markets. Yeah, it's, that's looking decent enough. Uh, that's without any kind of markup, though. And markup we will need. Uh, yeah, that would be a difficult sell. Um, the brakes certainly help at plus 10. Okay, I don't think we need more than these two cars to start out with. Uh, although, we might want to have an even cheaper one. Although that would hurt our prestige rating. That would really hurt our prestige rating. How much prestige do we have right now in this one? That is prestige 50 for the higher one and prestige, let's see. Come on, 36. Oh, that already took a big hit. Um, we need the prestige, though, to be able to sell cars later on. That is, like, the brand prestige will be super important. So I think I'm going forth and design this one and engineer this one, I mean. And, uh, 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 yes, yes, this hurts. 
Let's see. Four years, five months. Ouch. Ouchies. Ouchies, ouchies. Um, yeah, not good. So what do we do for this? Um, we do want to have more reliability. Nah, not really. Don't really care about reliability. We could fund it more. But nah. Uh, 4.5 years. But let me first check out what the engine is doing. 4.7 years. That, that sounds good. Because we have this guy. 3.9 years. Yay. All right. You can get a little bit extra time. Like this. More reliability. We like this. 40 reliability. Still not good. But mm, yeah, we take it, I guess. And here, there's not much we can do about it. So yeah, let's let's just go ahead and design this whole thing. For a factory. Ah, fuck. Yeah, for, yeah we have 400 million. So I think we can be future-proof if we go with a medium-sized plot. I don't think we will ever get beyond medium. Although what... Oh, that is... No, that's too expensive. I can't afford too large. That, that would be too much. But a medium. I'm going with a medium. Medium for engine and medium for um, the, the engine factory. And let's build a small factory. Small two. Small two. Does that sound right? Doesn't sound right, does it? Small one factory to start out with. Otherwise, we will have overproduction like crazy. And this is the uh, one and only factory we need. So this is the... Uh, Duesenberg plant and automation doesn't cost much right now because there's basically nothing to automate uh, let me uh, just crank this one up a little bit so engines made per day 22 and 11 what okay we don't need a level 2 here oh yeah level 1 okay 11 13 perfect all right that's good uh 49 million though ouchies even this one at 60, uh, it helps. I would say it helps. Monthly build costs, 570. This is all looking good, but oh no, I didn't give it a name. This is the uh, Duesenberg engine plant. Uh, very creative naming here, Kilrob. And yeah, I, I think we will do something like this. One car per day out of these and 11 cars a day for this one. Do we need more shifts? I, I don't think we need many shifts. Let's, but let's gear it for two shifts, and then we can always reduce, which we probably will have to do, because this stuff is not going to sell well. And of course, no, yeah, yeah, this is a final check. As you can see, I'm actually playing with this difficulty now. Uh, this is a score multiplier of 2.0, difficulty rating insane, and that's the important one. It does not, it is not allowed to tick over to hard difficulty from here. Or what is it, very hard? Hard? I don't know. Um, probably hard. And it needs to be a score multiplier of 2.00 or above uh, with the insane difficulty rating. Okay, ready to go. This is looking reasonably good. Uh, this is the premium though. Which would sell into the sports segment. Yeah, a fair amount. But this is before markup. Uh, which is worrying. Ugh, this is very worrying. Uh, DBX? Oh yeah, they they want it. They really want it. But we have to mark it up like crazy. Maybe we go with something like this. Yeah. Let's, let's start out with this. And then we can always see how things are going. A decent markup and 94 months oh my god <laughs> yeah, you remember our mass producer history with uh, Vista Automotive six months break even time or something <laughs> those were the days guys those were the days and yeah let's start it out I think we have done what we came here to do we do have uh, we did adhere, adhere to all the limits. We didn't even come close to the minimum speed uh, limit. And yeah, lower limit, that is. And that is all good. So let's start dominating the world with the fastest cars in existence. Do we wish to skip to when the car enters production? Yes, we do. And we are already in 1950 now. And let's see how well it sells. So we go forward one day and production starts. 
And how much do we actually sell? Uh, ticky ticky, ticky clocky. There we go. <gasps> yeah, we actually sold them. What the hell? We made a profit of 1.7 million. All right, this is a start to um, the series, which I can appreciate. This is looking pretty decent. The economy isn't even going up extremely much. So uh, yeah, I, I, I think we are on the road, guys, on the road uh, with the fastest car in the world. And in the next episode, it is uh, car number two. And not only do I hope that you enjoyed, and that you are going to join me for the next episode, but that you are yourself designing a car for this challenge and write uh, for the next one, for the next <laughs> episode, so that's your second car, uh, and write about your first car and its stats down below in the comments. I want to read that, what you chose to build. And also over in the forum thread I will be, um, I will be checking out too if you prefer to post there with pictures and all kinds of shit. So um, link in description in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.